Roxaboxin by Alice McLeary, illustrated by Barbara Cooney. Marion called it Roxaboxin. She always knew the name of everything. There across the road, it looked like any rocky hill. Nothing but sand and rocks, some old wooden boxes, cactus and greasy wood, and thorny octillo. But it was a special place. The street between rocks and boxes and the houses curved like a river, so Marion named it the River Road. After that, you had to ford a river to reach rocks and boxes. Of course, all of Marion's sisters came. Anna Mae and Frances and little Jean, Charles from next door, even though he was 12, oh, and Eleanor, naturally, and Jamie with his brother Paul. Later on, there were others, but these were the first. Well, not really the first. Roxaboxen had always been there and must have belonged to others long before. When Marion dug up a tiny box filled with brown black pebbles, everyone knew what it was. It was a buried treasure. Those pebbles were the money of Roxaboxen. You could still find others like them if you looked hard enough. So some days became treasure hunting days, with everybody trying to find that special kind. And then on other days, you might just find one without even looking. A town of Roxaboxen began to grow, traced in lines of stones. Main Street first, edged with the whitest ones. And then the houses. Charles made his of the biggest stones. After all, he was the oldest. At first the houses were very plain, but soon they all began to add more rooms. The old wooden boxes could be, be shelves or tables or anything you wanted. You could find pieces of pottery for dishes. Round pieces were the best. Later on, there was a town hall. Marion was mayor, of course. That was just the way she was. Nobody minded. After a while, they added other streets. Frances moved to one of them and built herself a new house outlined in desert glass. Bits of amber, amethyst, and sea green. A house of jewels. And because everybody had plenty of money, there were plenty of shops. Jean helped Anna Mae in the bakery. Pies and cakes and bread baked warm in the sun. There were two ice cream parlors. Was Paul's ice cream the best or Eleanor's? Everybody kept trying them both. And rocks a boxin, you can eat all the ice cream you want. Everybody had a car. All you needed was something round for a steering wheel. Of course, if you broke the speed limit, you had to go to jail. The jail had cactus on the floor to make it uncomfortable. And Jamie was the policeman. Anna Mae, quiet little Anna Mae, was always speeding. You'd think she liked to go to jail. But ah, if you had a horse, you could go as fast as the wind. There were no speed limits for horses, and you didn't have to stay on the roads. All you needed for a horse was a stick and some kind of bridle, and you could gallop anywhere. Sometimes there were wars. Once there was a great war, boys against girls. Charles and Marion were the generals. The girls had Fort Irene, and they were all girl scouts. The boys had a fort at the other end of Roxaboxen, and they were all bandits. Oh, the raids were fierce, loud with whooping and the stamping of horses. The whirling swords of Ocotillo had sharp thorns, but when you reached your fort, you were safe. Roxaboxen had a cemetery in case anyone, anyone died, but the only grave in it was for a dead lizard. Each year when the cactus bloomed, they decorated the grave 
with flowers. Sometimes in the winter, when everybody was at school and the weather was bad, no one went to Roxaboxen at all, not even for weeks and weeks. But it didn't matter. Roxaboxen was always waiting. Roxaboxen was always there. And spring came, and the ocotillo blossomed, and everybody sucked the honey from its flowers, and everybody built new rooms, and everybody decided to have jeweled windows. That summer, there were three new houses on the east slope and two new shops on Main Street. And so it went, the seasons changed, and the years went by. Roxy Boxing was always there. The years went by, and the seasons changed. And at last, the friends had all grown tall. And one by one, they moved away. To other houses, to other towns. So you might think that that was the end of Roxaboxen, but oh no, because none of them ever forgot Roxaboxen. Not one of them ever forgot. Years later, Marion's children listened to stories of that place and fell asleep dreaming dreams of Roxaboxen. Gray-haired Charles picked up a black pebble on the beach and stood holding it, remembering Roxaboxen. More than 50 years later, Frances went back and a Roxaboxen was still there. She could see the white stones bordering Main Street. And there were where she had built her house, the desert glass still glowed. Amethyst, amber, and sea green. And that is the end of Roxaboxen.